I was one of those people. You know, those people. We don't need a Toy Story 4. Toy Story 3 ended perfectly. But who cares about that now? We saw a good movie, here we go. Here's how to freaking enjoy. Toy Story is a franchise that I hold very close to my heart. The original series was like, Oh baby, a triple! And honestly, I didn't think we'd need a Toy Story 4. I actually swore to myself that I wouldn't watch it when it was announced. But here we are. I'm weak and had friends that wanted to see Toy Story 4. There's also this whole YouTube thing, but... <laughs> this film was so much better than I was expecting. It presented some really interesting and fresh ideas and was a nice epilogue to the series. I've now shifted from this camp to this camp. This film was such a nice surprise. Pixar has always had a way of making great films, except that one time. There's so much to dive into with this film, and I'm not even sure where to begin. Wait, no I do. This movie is gorgeous. I wasn't sure that animation could look this good, but Pixar must employ wizards, because just look at this! We went from this to this, and it only took 25 years. <laughs> The animation on display here is stellar. I'd honestly put it in the same vein as Spider-Verse and Cuphead when it comes to polish. Everything looked so smooth and vibrant. The colours popped and the world honestly felt alive. Even things like simulating camera focus and movements looked phenomenal. The best way I could describe it is a mashup of live action and animation. It seriously looked that good. Remember two minutes ago when I said that Toy Story 3 ended perfectly and Toy Story 4 would never surpass it? And that's true but damn if it doesn't come close. No spoilers here, but this film managed to end in a satisfying way, and honestly, that was my biggest worry for it. It didn't destroy me emotionally the way that Toy Story 3 did, but I could hear plenty of sniffling in my theatre, so it's clear that it emotionally wrecked everyone else. The villain in this film was great too. No spoilers again, but they were actually complex and had an interesting journey, and these guys were nightmare fuel. Good god, who even needs the new child's play when these fellas can scare you twice as much in just a few seconds from the trailer? Forky presented some really interesting questions about this universe. What makes something alive? How do they deal with it? But it wasn't explored to the extent I would have hoped. It was still interesting nonetheless, and seeing how he brought the other themes into the movie was fantastic. He was a central point of this movie, and having him tie into everything else was the perfect way to reinforce that. Honestly, all of the new characters were a treat. Seeing Bo back was amazing, and the rest of the new cast was nothing short of welcome. Although they did overshadow our main cast a little, it was honestly something that didn't bug me until the movie was over. Sure, it would have been nice to see our gang on an adventure together again, but this film was about moving on, and having a new cast be at the forefront only reinforced that theme. About those guys. Everything has Keanu Reeves now. John Wick has Keanu Reeves. Cyberpunk has Keanu Reeves. E3 has Keanu Reeves. The memes have Keanu Reeves. Keanu in this film was... Breathtaking. You're breathtaking! <laughs> You're Taken. His character was fun and had a different abandonment tale to the ones we've seen in the past. <laughs> we also had this little lady, who was pretty energetic. She didn't serve much of a purpose in the film, but always added some energy to the scene she was in. <sighs> they left my boy Combat Carl hanging. Then we had these dudes. When I saw that sneak peek of them, I thought, hey, these guys might be funny, but only in small doses. They were in most of the movie, and they were hilarious. There's one scene in particular, you'll know the one if you've seen the film, that might be the funniest scene of the year. It was great, and honestly, I'm a little sad we might never see these guys again. Honestly, the humour as a whole in this movie was pretty great. I was consistently laughing throughout, and overarching jokes had great setups and payoffs. This is easily the funniest of the four films. Keeping in theme with different, something about this film felt different from the other three. I don't know, we spent a trilogy moving on from Andy's room, and now we're here. It feels odd. This is going to sound weird, but I was getting a weird apocalyptic vibe from this film. I, I know, it sounds strange, but shifting from a world where every toy we knew had a kid in some form, to a film where every toy is surprised when a toy had a kid. I'm torn on whether or not I like the vibe. Obviously the films have been building to this point, but it just felt off. The whole thing reminded me of that one meme that went around a few years back. Speaking of, let's move into the bad. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, yeah, season 7 and 8 were pretty shit, but season 9 was actually good television, seriously, check it out. But speaking of things that had nothing to do with Toy Story 4, Slinky, Rex, Mr and Mrs Potato Head, really anyone that wasn't Woody, Bo, Buzz, or the new cast, I know this film was about moving on, I said that not two minutes ago, and whilst I do welcome the change, 
I wanted to see these characters again after 10 years. On the plus side though, at least in my head, the original cast kept their final goodbye in Toy Story 3. I've seen the biggest problem that this film had in something else. The Walking Dead, coincidentally enough. Remember in seasons 5 and 6 when The Walking Dead got to a point where there were so many characters that the episodes had to split everyone up into groups and you'd be waiting weeks to see characters you loved and for plot threads to come to a head. This film had that problem. You had half a dozen plot threads alongside half a dozen groups of people throughout the film, and juggling this all into a two hour movie is tough. The most interesting of these threads was wrapped up way too quickly, and it seemed that the focus of the movie wasn't well defined. The plot threads did intertwine well, but it almost felt like this film was a trilogy condensed into one movie, and what was presented was interesting enough that I would have liked everything to have a lot more breathing room. At the end of the day, I'm so glad that this film actually had a purpose. It didn't feel as unnecessary as I thought it would be going in, and honestly, I had a good time. Pixar knocked it out of the park, technically. The animation was stellar, the voice acting was great, and the themes presented were interesting and unique extensions of what has come before. Toy Story 3 will always be the end for me. Nothing can top that scene. But Toy Story 4 is a nice epilogue to the series. The best way to enjoy this movie is as an epilogue to the series you love, and a progression into the future. We said goodbyes to the old cast in Toy Story 3, and whilst we do see how they're getting on without Andy, they aren't the main focus here. The characters are moving on, and I think it's time for us too as well. Pro tip, have uploads ready for when you go on holiday. Oh well, lesson learned. Expect all of my catch-up uploads within the next week. That includes Far From Home and Stranger Things 3. I'm going to try and cover as many films as possible over the summer. There's lots of interesting and smaller films coming out in lieu of bigger releases, so expect more stuff that you might not have heard of. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe.